Aqua. There we go. Hey everybody. Jim here with some more games. Good old couch. Good old coffee. Good old stack of games. Uh, once again, kind of a, um, I don't know, a gloomy day out there. We've been having some gloomy fall days here in Tokyo. Uh, I'm not sure what it is, but uh, the weather hasn't been great. Um, but you know, sometimes that's just fine with me. Uh, because there are those days, especially after a long week, where I like nothing more than just sitting on my couch, drinking coffee, playing games. Or in this case, talking about games. That's pretty fun too. Talking about them with you. You're not physically here right now, but you are camera in front of me. I just pretend that my camera is you, and that's how we get through these things. A little secret of the YouTubers. We pretend our camera is a person makes it easier to talk to <laughs> that's that sounds weird uh, anyway yeah hey everybody welcome back uh, I got a stack of games here today mixing it up a little bit uh, three Super Famicom games I picked up recently and three Sega Saturn games as well so a kind of a little uh, half and half today I usually like focus on uh, one console at a time but I said hey to hell with that it's called more games not more games of a specific type only in this certain time of day but no, it's called more games. Anyway, yeah, coffee time. When uh, pub, uh, Bubble Bobble tells you it's coffee time, it is indeed coffee time. I don't argue with the cup, I just drink. There we go. Shouldn't be arguing with cups anyway. That's a sure signifier that your mind is starting to go. Don't argue with inanimate objects. Um, even though I just told you I'm talking to an inanimate object right now. And pretending it's you, however many people it is watching this at home. All right, games. That is more interesting than my own uh, personal psychoses. Um, games, so let's start with three Super Famicom games uh, that are all awesome. A couple of these, actually, if you saw my um, most recent Hard Off Game Hunt, I think my most recent one, where I went to Oizumi Gakuen, I talked a little bit about a couple of these games, but we're gonna talk about them a little more in depth today. Um, first up though, awesome game. I've promoted this on my channel before. Uh, it was Import Game of the Day when I was still doing those, and uh, rightly so, because it's a very fun game and a very fun series of games, actually. Uh, this is The Great Battle 4. And The Great Battle series, these are awesome because it's a series of games featuring uh, little uh, sort of like chibi, super deformed versions of, um, I guess, Bandai characters, right? They would have to be Bandai characters because there's Gundam, and uh, there's uh, Kamen Rider, and there's Ultraman, and then there's another guy named, like, Fighter, something or other I can't really remember right now, but the most important thing, you got your Gundam, your Kamen Rider, and your Ultraman. Um, so they have various gameplay styles between them. This one is a straight-up, side-scrolling action platformer and you have all four of your characters, and you can swap between all four of them on the fly, and they all have different weapons. So, for example, I think the Gundam has just kind of like a straight-up, almost like shotgun-type weapon, where Ultraman has a rocket launcher, and I think Kamen Rider has like a flamethrower. So that's really cool. So they have their own unique weapons. They have uh, special abilities as well, and this like carried over... Um, I think the better-known game is uh, Great Battle 5, because that's the one where it's Old West themed and all the characters are little cowboys. Um, but this one is similar to that in that it's an action platformer. It ditches the Old West theme and kind of keeps just a straightforward, uh, more like sci-fi kind of motif uh, and a bit of a kaiju thing because there are stages, boss battles, where your four characters all jump into like a big mech suit, like a big Megazord type thing. And then you fight bosses in like your uh, your big Megazord form, and those are fun too, because you have all kinds of special abilities. And essentially, it's a little um, side-scrolling thing. And you just like, I don't know. I don't. I didn't really go for like a whole lot of strategy or anything. I just there's like a drill punch and stuff, and I think you can do like a machine gun thing out of your head. I just was doing whatever, whatever, just hitting buttons and. That actually got me through it. I just beat the hell out of all the bosses without too much trouble. Yeah, this is not a terribly difficult game or anything, but it is very fun. Um, if you like a, a good, just a solid, fun action platformer that you can finish in like an hour or something, um, you'll like this game, especially if you like 
uh, these characters and their little like chibi deformed versions. Like if you were like me when you were a teenager and you got some of those like little SD Gundam model kits because you didn't have the patience for the big model kits and those little SD ones were really easy to put together. If you had any of that stuff, um, you'll, you'll probably like uh, the characters and character designs in here too because the enemies are also like um, kind of like well-known enemies from the individual uh, properties. So there'll be like little Zakus and little monsters from Ultraman and stuff like that. Um, so that's cool. So fun gameplay, uh, nice graphics as well, and a pretty good soundtrack too. Um, so uh, really nothing but positives to say about this one. I think uh, Great Battle 5 is better, but this game is still really good and it's a lot cheaper than Great Battle 5 too. You can still get this game for like 10 bucks, 10 to 15. Uh, especially with the exchange rate these days. So this is one, if you're uh, collecting Super Famicom games, uh, you're going to want to put in your collection right away because it's great. It is the Great Battle 5. See what I did there? It's a great game. They're great. Next up, whew, another game that was, um, it was Import Game of the Day, when I, again, when I was still doing that series. And... Wow, years ago I did a, a video top 10 Japan exclusive Super Famicom games and uh, this was on there. I think I think I put it did I put it at number 10 or was it at number it was sort of in the back back half but um, amazing game. And again in my uh, previous uh, hard off video I talked a little bit about it but uh, here it is Tetris Battle Gaiden. And uh, this is, uh, I've said it before, my favorite Tetris game, uh, especially if you have two players, um, this is a ton of fun. If you like Tetris, this basically takes, um, you know, Tetris, the gameplay everybody knows, and kind of mixes it with the, you know, the competitive puzzle games that were kind of becoming popular in the early 90s. Stuff like uh, Puyo Puyo, or Dr. Mario, things like that. Puzzle games where you can play two players um, and they're competitive and they're fun and they're addictive. Same thing here. So it's the same Tetris gameplay, except you have a whole cast of really wacky characters you can choose from. And each one of them has a bunch of different special abilities that you can use to interrupt the other player's game. And the way you uh, get access to those special abilities is certain uh, the, uh, the Tetris pieces will uh, come down and they'll have like little yellow balls inside the piece and if you clear a line with one of those yellow balls in it it goes into your your stockpile of little uh, super moves and you can you have like various ones you have access to so they range from maybe just adding some extra pieces to your opponent's side or even like reversing their controls or just like straight up blowing up <laughs> their side of the screen and it leaves a bunch of holes um, that they have to like feel and you know it, it, it takes them it's like a lot it just makes the game a lot harder for them is what it is and each character has like several different special abilities um, that they can call upon to really just screw over uh, your your um, your opponent it's almost like um, like every move that each character has they're all the equivalent of just like a blue turtle shell in Mario Kart it you can really um, this game gets very competitive, I'll say that. A lot of expletives might fly when you're playing Tetris Battle Gaiden. Tempers might flare. Swear words come flying out when you're uh, literally destroying the other player's game. Um, so it's a lot of fun. Um, it's, uh, you know, a Tetris game, so you probably don't expect too much from the graphics, but it is a nice looking game. It's very colorful, at least, and the character designs are really cool, too. They came up with some some fun, original characters for this game. And the soundtrack is great, too. Pretty chill, uh, relaxing soundtrack uh, to play some Tetris, too. Even though it doesn't stay very chill and relaxing in the room very long uh, if you're playing competitively. Um, but it is insanely fun, very addictive, even if you're playing just single-player mode. Um, this is still a really great time. Um, it's one of those games that I can go back to any time, and it's one of my higher recommended Super Famicom games if you want to get into collecting for the Super Famicom. And it's another one that's pretty uh, affordable these days. You can probably pick this game up loose like this for like 10 bucks. Even if you pick up uh, a box copy, it'll probably be like 15 bucks. Um, affordable game and great and fun and exclusive to Japan. Uh, there's nothing else I can say really. It's just amazing. 
It's Tetris. Battle Gaiden. And it's so good. And speaking of so good, another game I picked up on the last hard off hunting trip. I said this was one of the finds of the day because it was, because it was a good price for a great game. Um, this is one I think most, uh, pretty much anyone who's into import collecting will know about this game. Even if you're not, you, you may have already heard of it because it has been featured on some other channels as like one of those quote unquote hidden gems on um, the uh, Super Famicom, but it's uh, Gundam Wing Endless Duel. And, uh, oh boy, this game is awesome. Gundam Wing was kind of my, really my first love for Gundam because as a kid growing up, I had never really seen any Gundam until I was maybe like 10 years old and Gundam Wing was airing on Toonami. And then after that, uh, they would air other Gundam series too and I would watch and enjoy those. But Gundam Wing was kind of like my first love with Gundam. I loved the mech designs. Uh, visually, the show was just stunning. The music was great too the opening and ending credits and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, great anime. The game is a very impressive 2D fighter, I will say that much. Uh, first off, the visuals. Um, this is a really, really good looking game for the Super Famicom. I would say this is one of the most graphically impressive Super Famicom games like I've ever seen. It's only maybe like a notch down from what could have been on a 32-bit console. Like, it looks really, really good. It looks better than some games, like some early 32-bit games even, probably. Um, it's just it, it really good. The, uh, the Gundams themselves, they're very large character sprites, but they're still very detailed. The stages are all very detailed as well. Lots of animation, stuff going on in the backgrounds. Um, so, just overall, just an amazing looking game. Soundtrack is also awesome. I think, is this a, I wonder, is this a Natsume game? I think it is. Natsume typically made like just amazing stuff. Published by Bandai, but I think Natsume did the, uh, the uh, development on this. Um, but it, it's fantastic. The gameplay is really good too. It's very smooth. It's not quite as fast as like some other fighting games because again, you're playing as Gundams and they kind of want to keep, um, I guess the weight of the Gundams, because on the show, mostly they're fighting in like outer space and stuff, or they're in the air or something. Um, they're not, a, you know, a lot of just straight up Street Fighter style fights in Gundam Wing, but that's what this game is. More or less Street Fighter Gundam Wing edition, and it's awesome. You have all of the different Gundams to choose from. So there's like the Wing Gundam and like Wing Zero and Shinlong and all the other ones. And then there's other ones as well. There's like Tall Geese and uh, a couple of others too. So there's, I think in total, there's like eight selectable characters, um, but they're awesome. So you got all your uh, Gundams and stuff you can play with. Uh, the controls, the everything is real smooth. Again, plays more or less like Street Fighter, but with Gundams. So that's awesome. Great visuals, great sound design. Uh, nothing really to complain about with this game. It is one that has become more expensive as of late. Especially if you can find it boxed and in like really good shape, you might be expected to pay a little more for it. I picked up this copy though at that hard off. I want to say it was like 20 bucks, which right now is a really good deal in this. You consider the exchange rate from dollars to yen is really advantageous right now. Um, so if you are a Super Famicom collector, especially in, uh, you know, if you're in North America, you're paying for everything with dollars. This is a fantastic deal right now if you can pick this up with the current exchange rate. Um, and again, it's it's one of the best Japan exclusive Super Famicom games. Again, this is one that I put in my top 10 uh, because it is that good and it is Gundam Wing Endless Duel. It's a game you'll definitely wanna play if you're getting into import games. It's one of the better ones. And uh, with that, three games down, three Super Famicom games down, We've got three Sega Saturn games to take a look at, so I'm gonna sip my coffee. Uh, you take a look at whatever I'm gonna insert right here. That's what she said. And uh, we'll be right back. Check it out. Super Famicom presents こんにちは。今日も元気にスーパーファミコンをやっていますか？これからご紹介する新ソフトはとっても綺麗でとっても面白い 
頼もしいラインナップになっていますそこの君よそ見なんかしてる場合じゃないですよ Alright Coffee Giving me the energy I need Alright Sega Saturn Games 3 Sega Saturn Games 3 Fantastic Sega Saturn Games that I think If、uh, you're someone interested in the Sega Saturn, especially import games for it, these are some games you're going to want to play.、Uh, first up, amazing game. I believe the sequel to、uh, what was called Cybernator on the Sega Genesis.、Um, so you might already know, but it is Assault Suit Lanos 2. So the original Cybernator on the Mega Drive in Japan is called Assault Suit Lanos. Uh, Cybernator in North America, at least. I'm not sure about if, if it was released in uh, uh, PAL.、Um, but, you know, that original game is a fun mech suit action game. 2D go around,、uh, pretty self explanatory. Go shoot a bunch of things with machine guns, blow them up with missiles, and、uh, have a grand old time. Assault Suit Lanos 2 is more of that, it's just better. Um, so, you got your mech suit. When you start the game, you don't really have. You're not as badass as you will、uh, come to be.、Um, you've got your machine guns and missiles, and the first stage has you, like, I think, like, attacking some kind of base or something in a forest. So, you're blowing up a lot of ground enemies, and then, like, there's, like, airplanes and stuff that come in. But essentially, you're jumping all around the screen. You have, like, jet boosts, so you can sort of, like, hover and fly around and do high jumps. But、uh, the, the essential premise of the game is you're going to have some sort of objective, something you've got to destroy.、Um, so go around the stage, blow up everything in sight. It, everything you see is going to be an enemy, so just destroy it and、uh, move on. But as you continue to play, you get more and more weapons until eventually you've got like, these like, laser cannons and flamethrowers, and you've got heavier armor on your suit. And you eventually you go and you do space missions. So, you'll just be like floating around in space shooting lasers and stuff like that. You don't gotta worry about all those ground enemies. They don't exist anymore because you're in space. Blow up spaceships, blow up other mech suits, all kinds of stuff. Actually, you know, now that I think about it, I'm talking about Assault Suit Lanos 2. This would have been like a great way to make a Gundam game back then. They should have just given the Gundam license to these guys and they could have made a fun Gundam game like this because I can imagine this game. Except instead of playing as the, the mech suit here, you're playing as like, yeah, Gundam Wing or something. Or Gundam Heavy Arms. That would be even better with just machine guns and rockets and all kinds of cool stuff. That would be great.、Um, but that's essentially what Assault Suit Lanos is. So if you've played Cybernator,、um, this is just a much better version of Cybernator. Better in terms of the gameplay, obviously, much better in terms of the visuals. It's not like a stunning game, but it does look very nice. And the soundtrack is pretty good too. I think this was. Uh, this is developed by Messiah, or at least published by Messiah and NCS. I never know, I can never really tell the difference of who published and who developed something. Anyway,、um, it's an amazing game, a 1997 release.、Um, if you like side scrolling, shoot 'em up,、uh, destroy everything kind of stuff, mech action, especially if you like the original Cybernator,、um, this is going to be something you're going to be really happy with. And again, Salt, Assault Suit Lanos 2. Um, not the most expensive Saturn game. Some Saturn games, Japanese Saturn games at least, are starting to climb in price. Assault Suit Lanos 2, luckily, not really one of them. Probably pick it up for between $20 and $30 bucks these days, which I'd say is a pretty good deal on it because it's a great game that you're going to have a lot of fun with if you enjoy、uh, mech action, as I've been having a lot of fun with it recently. Assault Suit Lanos 2. Great, which I. I don't know what a Lanos is. I do like the name Cybernator, though. I think this would have been much better served by a title like Cybernator 2 Judgment Day. Okay.、Um, next up,、uh, since not everything you know, is like a, just an action game or something, actually, we already had Tetris. Another puzzle game, though.、Uh, another puzzle series that I'm a huge fan of. I've played a lot of games in this series.、Um, go figure. We got the bubble bobble going. We've got. Puzzle Bobble 2X. And Puzzle Bobble 2X, what to say? There's not a whole lot, to, there's not like a huge difference from one Puzzle Bobble game to the next.、Um, if you've played one, you've kind of played them all. They'll add like little features and little characters to play as and things and different layouts. I think that's kind of the real, the real draw is like just the different layouts for the puzzles and things. Actually, 
a cool feature in this game is that it has a puzzle editor mode. So you can actually, because there's a, a single player uh, game in here where you just, you know, clear the screen of all the bubbles as quickly as you can before they descend and you lose. Um, there's a versus mode too. Um, you can play two players, and I think you can also just do, if you want to play competitively against the CPU, you can. But obviously this is a lot better played with two players. Or if you just want to play regular puzzle mode as a single player, it's a lot of fun there too. But there is like an editor mode in here where you can create, I think it, on the back of the case it says up to 30 different uh, puzzles. You can create your own unique puzzles in here, save them, and then play them yourselves or... or uh, as they say, challenge your friends with your, your puzzles. Although, are, are a lot of your friends coming over to play Puzzle Bobble 2? Is that happening? Because, you know, my friends come over to my place every once in a while. And they never want to play Puzzle Bobble 2. I don't know what the hell's going on. Um, but you can create your own unique puzzles. And that's a really cool feature in this game. I don't think I've seen in like any other puzzle games. But other than that, it is just straight up... Uh, awesome puzzle bobble action so it's fun addictive puzzle gameplay with nice colorful graphics and a great chill soundtrack and lots of cutesy little title characters and uh, it's just awesome I don't really know what else to say other than that if you like puzzle bobble this is gonna be right up your alley another game on the Japanese Saturn that is not particularly expensive these days this is another one you can pick it up like 20 bucks 30 bucks if you're a puzzler fan this is going to be one you'll want to have in your collection. It's Puzzle Bobble 2X. And it's a whole lot of fun. Um, last up, finally, we're talking about Sega Saturn. Uh, we got to talk about a shoot 'em up. Um, this one I picked up recently. Uh, luckily, Saturn shooters, a lot of them have become pretty expensive. Some of them are not too outlandishly expensive. So, for example, Layer Section is still a fairly affordable shoot 'em up. Maybe like uh, Gradius uh, Collection is still kind of, you know, not gonna break your wallet too much. And this one, it's going up in price. It's not outlandish. I would say this, I don't know, in the $50 range maybe, but it's so good. It's one of the better shooters on the console. Um, ladies and gents, it's Sokyu Gurentai. Which, I think there's also a PS1 version of this game, and I'm wondering if they haven't re-released it on something else recently. Anyway, this is a shoot 'em up by Rising, which Rising made so many great shoot 'em ups I, I, I'm thinking like, uh, what was the game, Batrider, something Police Batrider, or Kingdom Grand Prix. They made a lot of really good shoot 'em ups back in the day. This one, I mean, you have three ships to choose from. And what's, what's especially cool in here is you've got your, you know, primary shot, as is typical of any um, shoot 'em up and you've got your super bombs as well. But you also have this sort of, I don't know, this you can expand this almost like a little um, radar missile net thing that anything that is within it, uh, you can lock onto it and then launch like missiles or lasers or whatever this, uh, the ship has. Um, and that's cool because there's like different ones for different ships. So there's like a cone shaped one where you're knocking out, you know, you can uh, basically just hit anything in front of you and you can maneuver it around. There's one where it's just like a big sphere that comes out around your ship. And that's my preference because if an enemy is behind you or in front of you, it doesn't matter where they are. If they fall within that sphere, you lock onto them and you blow them up. Um, there's even sort of like shades of like a layer section type game in here because there are parts where like you'll be descending and there are enemies below you and before you can shoot them with your main guns you can lock on to them to hit them with missiles and lasers so that's cool um, but just overall uh, a very fun game um, challenging shoot em up but just the gameplay is just so solid it's so excellent rising rising never made a bad shoot em up they only made like a plus tier shooters and that's what this is uh, Sokyu Gurentai in my opinion is one of the better shoot em ups on the console. I'd put it probably in my top five. It's really, really good. The visuals are pretty nice. Uh, the sound design is pretty good too. Um, but the gameplay is really where it's at with this game. I would say the visuals and the soundtrack stuff, none of that's going to blow you away. You're going to say, oh, this, these are nice visuals. 
this is a pretty good soundtrack, but uh, the gameplay, you're going to be saying to yourself, holy hell, this is awesome. <laughs> this is such a great game. Um, so yeah, I love this game. Uh, picked it up again recently. I'm having some fun with it. About to mail it off uh, probably this month. Send it to some lucky boy or girl out there. But for the time being, uh, I've been enjoying it. It's been in my collection before. It's in my collection now. It'll be in my collection again. Um, this is one that just is in and out all the time because a lot of people ask for Saturn games and I oblige them and I try to send them the best games I can and uh, whenever I am uh, able to, I will send them a copy of things like Sokyo Gurintai, Strikers 1945, Layer Section, Parodius, all the great shoot 'em ups on the Saturn. Uh, anyway, I've gushed enough. Uh, you get it, this game's amazing, and if you're a Saturn collector, a shoot 'em up fan, an import collector in general, this is one you're gonna want in your collection because it's so damn good. It is so cute. Gurintai. And it's totally rad. It blew my balls off. After I finished this game, I had to go and get my balls surgically repaired. That's a little bit, that's kind of gross for a video like this, isn't it? Anyway, um, hey, down in the comments, let me know. What do you think of these games? Have you played them? Did you enjoy them? I'd like to know. I do go down there and read those comments from time to time. Uh, so let me know what you thought of these games um, or any of them on your wish list. Or just go ahead if there's any Super Famicom games, Saturn games, or import games in general that you're desperate to play. Or maybe you'd like to listen to me talk about them here in more games or maybe in a review on Show Review and something like that. Uh, let me know down in the comments. I'll read them and I will take everything to heart. Uh, but with that being said, uh, I want to finish my coffee and I want to pop some of these games back in and enjoy them uh, fleetingly while I have them. Uh, so thanks for watching everybody. I will see you on the next more games. Take care. Goodbye.